Today we're doing something special. Well, you know, it's the Ford controversy. Do we go with the Coyote V8 with the rumble, or do we go with the EcoBoost V6 twin turbo? So, to figure out which one's better, we're here on the Ike. We're gonna run the Ike gauntlet, we're gonna go down, count the brake applications, come back up the mountain, see how much power these things have, and at the end of this video, we will tell you definitively which one of these two trucks is better. And to make it even more interesting, the gray V8 truck is a two-wheel drive, and the red EcoBoost is a four x four. All you Ford owners out there, do you get annoyed by your auto start stop feature? Well, now you can simply install this, the auto stop eliminator to prevent your vehicle auto stop start feature on every ignition cycle. Just use the link below and go to autostopeliminator.com to see how easy it is to install and use this little device. Our test trailer is a Cimarron North Star. It's a two horse, like a warm blood trailer. Now this is an aluminum horse trailer, kind of like the aluminum truck from Ford we're using. It all makes a lot of sense. We're all trying to save weight so you have more payload, more trailer capacity. And on the back here, this is the ramp. I'm gonna show you the weights that we have. And we are at about 8,900 pounds. And that's from the water ballast I'm gonna show you in here, the tanks that we always use. And there you go, it's our water totes. Two of them filled up. That gets our total weight trailer and the water at about 8,900 pounds. So we're using the same procedure on the way down. Uh, we're coming out of the tunnel about 50 miles an hour. Here we are. And we're gonna count brake applications. Okay. We're in tow haul mode. Yes. Right? Yes, we are. And um, we want to see how the algorithm performs, right? Yeah. How the transmission is programmed. Yeah. We've seen this progression over the last few years. Right. First it was a six speed, right? Then the 17 came out with a 10 speed. Yeah. But we didn't like that programming, right? Right. And then they changed it and now it's on just certain models. So, okay, here's 60. Go my so, first the, number one? Yep. Okay, so there's number one break up. Okay. So under the hood of this red F-150, this is a Lariat model, we have that 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Now this engine makes 375 horsepower and more importantly, 470 pound-feet of mountain climbing torque. And of course it's made it to 10 speed automatic. There's them one more time. Number four? Yep. It seems to be, it's keeping uh, RPMs around four. Yeah, it doesn't seem to get yes. anywhere over 4,500. And seems, what's yeah, gear, what gear are we in? Gear are third. Oh, okay. you're in third. third. Okay. Yes, it won't, it won't, you know, we learned that it will not go in a second because it's too high RPMs. And I mean, I just gotta say, watching the tag, the shifts are so smooth here. Alright, so 11 it is. 11 huh? it is. Okay. Well, let's go up the mountain. I mean, EcoBoost is known for power. Of course, turbocharged engine in the mountains. That's what you want, right? This is the same number as we got in previous years with an F-150 EcoBoost and it's also the most brake applications we've recorded for the half done segment. You might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, this is not fair, the two-wheel drive truck weighs a lot less. In fact, yes it does, about 700 pound advantage of that four-wheel drive Lariat the way they said here. The Lariat has an advantage of turbocharging. It can make more power at higher elevations and we're going to over 11,158 feet above sea level. And now, holy mo- There's ice. Yeah. Holy cow, you're already spinning, hold, hold, it, hold, hold the horses, hold the horses. <laughs> well, you try to modulate this right at 60, that's and you go hard job, up, right? Yes, you go up and you go down. I had to let it breathe a little there, it's kind of cold. So the EcoBoost, I mean, really tugs at the leash. Yeah, it really does, it feels good. We ask for trucks from every manufacturer for our testing every year, and we don't have a lot of choice. You know, I specify crew cab, four-wheel drive, 
you know, for the iGauntlet. Obviously, we've tested many, many F-150s, so you guys can see that over the years how that's progressed. So as we've already told you guys, these trucks are pretty different, but look at this, it's actually pretty funny. Fuel economy ratings, the exact same, despite the fact that one's two wheel drive, one's four wheel drive, different engines. So it'll be really interesting to see what the fuel economy is out there on the mountain. And then we gotta talk about the pricing. So on our XLT model here, much more basic model, the price comes in at $43,910. Then you move up to that Lariat, it's loaded up with some options. That truck comes in at 65 dollars Grand. So certainly a big price difference between these two rigs. What gear are you in now? Fifth gear. Fifth gear. So it seems like fifth gear is what it likes. Yeah, fifth gear rated 60, right? Yeah. yeah is that's that fourth? Right. That's that was only, fourth. Yeah, I kicked down there. Yeah, and that still only gets up to 3600 RPM, which is still not much for a gas oh. engine. But you still have reserve power. I mean, can oh, you? Oh, well, yeah, I could, I could go up to the seal 90 miles an hour if you let me. But no, I, think I won't you let, let you. Me. You really no. let me. No, no, let me, let me, let me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> It seems like there's so much power left over. Yeah. Well, there is. There yeah, the is. Fact I mean, that it's on the lower gear. I'm almost surprised that it could yeah. be sitting in fifth the whole time. 3,100 RPM. Okay, I may have to try. I think you know, 3,000 RPM to 3,500 RPM. That's kind of peak torque. Yeah. For this particular, for the EcoBoost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's happy there, right? Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's just chilling. Yeah, the five liter is probably going to find it a little harder to breathe, so it'll probably be running a little, a little hotter, I think. Here we are at the end. And. Bam! Look. Nice. 758. 3.5. An 8 minute is sort of like the benchmark. It's the benchmark. Yeah. We cannot really do much better than that because that's the speed limit. Sure. Yeah. So, so. So this truck, no problem. No problem in the EcoBoost. No problem. I don't know what's going to happen because we haven't tested the V8 10 speed combination. That's the That's interesting thing. So, V8 10 speed plus the 315 rear end on this truck. Yeah, so very strange it's a, ratio. It's a whole different ball of wax. And it's much lighter, 700 pounds lighter than that other truck is because we don't have four wheel drive here either, plus a couple other options. Right. So, let's see what the whole thing, how, how it does. 60. 60. That's the first one? Yes. There's number one. That's number one brake application. We're again counting brake applications. And under the hood of this gray F-150, this is an XLT model, we do have that 5 liter V8. Now it makes 395 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. This is a classic Ford engine. This is the 302, the 5 liter V8. The one that sounds so cool has been in Mustangs, Lincolns, everything. It's an old engine, but it's cool now. It's with a 10 speed on the back end. And this one's for fuel mileage. It's got a 315 rear axle ratio. It's a two wheel drive. All that stuff helps your fuel mileage. It's got a giant wind dam underneath the bumper. So just like the other truck, it seems to like third. It's holding in third, which is exactly the same as what the EcoBoost was doing. And for what it's worth, uh, if you get a truck without a sunroof, you got way more headroom in the back seat. Yeah, it's usually, <laughs> I was a little cramped in that yeah. other truck, and in this truck, I got yeah. tons of space. It's up usually here. an inch and a half, but maybe two inches. On yeah, some no, of it's these. a significant difference. So if you really value rear seat headroom, don't get a sunroof. Let's watch it very carefully because right, we're okay. almost done. Yeah, and I don't think we're gonna need ten. Come on, fifty-nine. Hold it. Nine. Come, come on. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Put your foot out and drag on the ground a little bit. All right. <laughs> Fred Flintstone, come on. Oh, Dude, the decrease! Oh my down. gosh, it's Look slowing down! down. We, we, nice. we, we were feeling the right thing, Steve. That's yeah, 56. We're, we're doing it, so that's right. That's nine? That's that nine, nine brake applications oh. we're done. Yeah, yeah. It versus 11. Too. Here we go, and starting now. Basically right at 35, perfect. And you're wide open? Yes. Go to the floor. You know, the Coyote wakes up over like 4,500 RPM. It sounds like it. Look, it, it goes right to red line too. Yes. Right to 57. It goes over red line. Holy cow, it's still <laughs> climbing. Just a little over six grand on that shift. Yeah, we're in Tahoe mode. I'm surprised it did that. Well, it's singing yeah. in third gear. Yeah. Yeah, we're 4,500 RPMs. Uh, unlike the EcoBoost, you don't have any more, but it's just enough. It's good. cuts down to the traditional question, you know, do you stay with the V8 
naturally aspirated, yeah. or do you go for twin turbos and smaller displacement? Sure. And yeah, I mean, I think yeah. the big argument we hear all the time is about reliability. And people really believe that the five liter is just going to be more reliable because it's less complicated, right? No turbos on the top. Uh -huh. I, I can't really speak to it. I mean, I've never had issue with EcoBoost, no. um, but you know, maybe longevity-wise, there's a point there. You can't beat twin turbos in this album elevation. Nothing yeah, especially does. at the elevation. But you know, yeah. elevation or no elevation, you can't deny the power of that EcoBoost. Right. Those turbos kick. It's just so strong, and and the torque is so it's so available down low, right? It's right low in the RPM range. So the five liter, you know, it feels like it's doing more work. Even though it's doing the same thing, the EcoBoost wasn't breathing as hard to do the same job, right? Right, right. Well, the EcoBoost was in fifth a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, right now, we're balancing between third and fourth. Yeah. And I think it's happiest in third. Well, and then, of course, the other big thing is cost, right? The V8's a little bit cheaper. I don't know exactly how much. Turbo, right. about, I think about a thousand bucks or something last time I was looking at right. it. Right. Really? That's, that's, that's real money. Yeah, so, bucks. you know, if you just want to save a few bucks, and, and you're getting a little bit less power, but not significantly less power. I mean, 400 horsepower or 395, right, is, is still pretty significant. Are you I mean, wide open now? I know. I'm not. I'm right at 60. Wow. I still got some. I can go give me go faster. Yeah, like, well, we're, we're at the, the end. Road? There's no backing down well, I'm now. I'm at 60. I mean, give me go faster than 60. We're so close. And the timer stops. Now. Okay. Not I actually bad. got a little That's above. 806. 806 and, four, slower, and four, four miles, miles per, per gallon. gallon. So it beat the EcoBoost by a half, yeah, which is better. That's pretty good, yeah. That, according to the trip meter, that's significantly better. Yeah. yeah, we're finding more reasons to buy this V8. Where do you guys stand on which engine in the F-150 is best for this environment? You know, that's kind of tricky because we all love the EcoBoost and all the power it has. But in this race we just did now, or this contest, better fuel mileage on that V8, the old Coyote, and a little better braking coming down. That's which is transmission working properly on that 10 speed. So I'm going to have to go with that V8 302 Coyote. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, there's no doubt that the Coyote definitely sounds better, but I got to stick with the EcoBoost. I mean, it's nice to have more power than you need. That just gives you absolute confidence, especially up here at elevation. And yeah, I'm all for power, so EcoBoost it is. Andre? Yeah, the V8 was struggling just a smidge on the way up, but I have to go V8. A lot of the normal driving, I think I would prefer the sound better. Okay. The sound of the V8. Yes, that's what's important is that good old V8 rumble we all miss. <laughs> Go back to tfltruck.com for more news, views, and real world reviews. Now, where else? MrTruck.com. And don't forget about TFL Off Road, our latest channel. Come check me out over there. <laughs>